okay yeah so so i will uh, yeah briefly recall what we have done last time uh, but uh, let me just start with the definition of the uh, k tens k tens the general definition so so what is a k tensor um, so you can recall it's a sort of multilinear function k multilinear function and uh, and what is the meaning of a k multilinear function uh, i should not say k, k it's a, just a multilinear function not k multilinear k linear there is another uh, terminology k linear either you can say k linear or multilinear so uh, a multilinear function um, uh, we call it a tensor basically and uh, so here is the definition so you say a function uh, f from uh, you take n cop uh, let's say k sorry k copies of the uh, the vector space so a vector space v is of some is some finite dimensional vector space so a ten, uh, so you say you have a k tensor if you have some function which is uh, defined on uh, k copies of k cut when you take the cartesian product of these vector space with itself k times then that function if it is a multilinear uh, we say it's a k tensor okay uh, multilinear means it, it is linear with respect to each of its variable so for instance if you, there are k copies so uh, you you can have um, k many variables right this here this place yeah so uh, the meaning is that uh, when you keep one variable keep uh, take others variable to be constant and fix one of the variables to keep varying uh, sorry uh, take one of the variables to be varying uh, then in that situation you know that this f is, uh, suffix vi from v to r we demand this functions to be linear for all i and this should happens for all i okay and what is the in equations what it says is this so linear linearity of how you can write the linearity of this function from v to r so it's just like i said you can treat these v1 v2 up to vi minus 1 uh, variables to be constant and uh, means fixed and after that vi plus 1 till uh, vk this to be also you can uh, keep uh, these variables to be fixed and the only variable which you which is allowed to vary is vi okay then uh, we say we have to check that uh, with respect to this vi variable that means this function f uh, restricted to vi so okay i think the better way to to write this is so you can also uh, uh, so you can just say yeah this is you can identify that this is your f of f vi and uh, you un understand that okay this just depends on the ith variable okay because others variables are uh, constant you have kept, kept fixed so you want this to be linear the linearity of this means linearity in this variable so uh, so you take vi1 uh, vi2 so these are uh, yeah this is how you check the linearity right you take two vectors and take the linear combination then you check if distribute the function get distributed over uh, this um, um, thing okay so you should have f of this sh should be alpha times f of this whole thing and then plus beta times this okay so th this is the general definition of a k tensor um, so this these things are like i have said here this except ith variable um, uh, others are fixed so so for each of these variable this should happen that uh, these all f v i is a uh, linear map okay and uh, yes so quick uh, some uh, observation or remark that now you once you have defined the k tensors um, then uh, 
if you consider the space of all k tensors on the vector space on given vector space v uh, we can give a notation for it l suffix kv then um, you can actually make this space of k tensors a vector space uh, real vector space uh, so what is the meaning uh, then you have to uh, say how do you how you are going to add two tensors and what is the scalar multiplication of a tensor by a scalar so uh, it's uh, uh, if you just write the definition uh, you will see that the, the natural way of defining it like so if suppose if you have two tensors f from which is a map from vk to r which is a multilinear function k, which that means k linear and g is also a map from vk to r uh, then we have to define uh, addition in such a way that this addition also belongs to, is also a k tensor basically so if you try if you define this addition to be this f plus g of acting on this v1 v2 vk to be this f of then you can uh, see that this uh, belongs to the space this this is also a multilinear uh, um, function k in fact it's a k linear so you can check this and uh, similarly this um, this alpha times the scalar multiplication is the usual way this alpha times f of this then this also defines k tensor and then you can just check other properties so this is how, how the, the space of k tensors forms a vector space now uh, so we we are more or less going to do the same Mm -hmm. examples uh, i will be talking about the those two examples the dot product on rn and the determinant function just i will recall those examples and today actually we are going to see um, i will talk a, a bit about permutations because this is how because some of the definitions of tensors like type of tensor like symmetric tensor and alternating tensor uh, it depends on the uh, it, it is related to permutation uh, set or permutation group so i will just very i will say it's a very brief introduction just through some examples i will try to uh, explain certain term terminology which will be helpful uh, and other details other things you can check yourself but yeah i will uh, try to do something whatever like minimum we needed in order to um, understand the definition of the alternating k tensor Okay, so yeah, the the so we have seen the example for dot product on R two. So last time we talked about on R two. So there's nothing special about R two. You can as well take R n in place of R n. Then uh, you know that uh, this uh, you have this dot product on R n. So so it's a function from that means R n cross R n to R. Right. And just uh, you have u comma v, then you send it to u comma v. So, so this uh, and you know what is the meaning of this component wise multiplication and then adding. Uh, just uh, uh, wait, wait a minute. Sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> so, yes, so this is one example which we discussed, and then the determinant uh, uh, example also we discussed that the determinant function on R2, in fact, I showed that this defines a tensor. So, uh, the, uh, again, we can uh, take determinant function on Rn also, and you know um, how to define this. And you can check that. Uh, we will see that, uh, in fact, we have seen last time. That this is uh, this this uh, is an alternating tensor. See, I haven't given the any definition yet. I uh, last time what I did, I just uh, I have just shown some of the examples here. I discussed some of the examples, and then I was saying this is symmetric tensor, and some example like did for dot product. We have a, that forms a prototype example of a 
symmetric tensor. Okay, and then the determinant function for uh, for determinant function, I said it's a it's an alternating, but I haven't given a formal uh, way of defining what is an alternating tensor. But uh, we we have seen a sort of characterization uh, if we have an alternating tensor, at least on R two, what could happen? So, for instance, if you recall um, last time, uh, yeah, this here we made this observation like. For determinant function on R two, what 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 was happening that um, uh, we could see that when you interchange the variables, u v is going to uh, just u going to v, and so you interchange these variables, then this was the relation that uh, the f of u v is uh, is equal to minus of f of v. This was happening, okay, in the case of determinant function, and from that we have derived an equivalent condition. If this happens, then something, uh, yeah, this will happen that on the diagonal, this f will assume takes zero value, and this is vice versa also. If you assume this, you will have this. So th this was a sort of characterization, like the character uh, it was characterizing this determinant function that this satisfy this property. So now based on this observation, we we want to generalize. We want to give a general definition of an uh, alternating. And I said it's an alternating, but I haven't defined what is an alternating tensor or a symmetric tensor. So today we will give a formal definition of that. But yeah, so these were the examples. And but to <laughs> before defining, giving the definition of this symmetric tensor or alternating tensor, I will talk a bit about um, permutations. Okay, because the definition of this alternating uh, uh, tensor and uh, uh, symmetric tensor depends on the similar uh, this permutation set or permutation. You see, because we are see we are talking about per, uh, permuting the variables or um, interchanging the variable, right? So it's a, some kind of ordering, uh, changing the order. And you know this whenever you do that, if you think about this sort of uh, phenomenon, then you always think of uh, the SN, the set of uh, which you know it's the permutation group. Okay, so this is automatic, like something like that will happen. Okay, we have to associate these things to those things. Okay, yeah. So last time we saw these things, uh, and uh, yeah. okay. Yes, and also, yeah, so next is what? So these are some of, again, uh, some examples uh, uh, of a K tensor on, again, see, I just, uh, I am, uh, sorry. Okay, okay so. Okay, now let me just first talk about permutations and then uh, I will define the alternating uh, tensors. So what is a permutation? Okay, what is the meaning? So you, so you take some set, let's say finite set uh, consisting of uh, finite numbers, the natural numbers. So A is, let's say one, two and up to K. Then you know that the any bijection on this set is, uh, uh, basically, it's a map. Or oh, sorry. Okay, what I mean that is a map sigma from. Yeah. So uh, a bijection of this set uh, defines a permutation of uh, this set, right? Any bijection means a bijection is it should be in one one and onto map. And. This bijection, when you do the bijection, means what? Uh, it is a map from A to A only. So that means you will be sending one to some other, two to some different. So it's a kind of shuffling the elements uh, of A or reordering. Okay, so one goes to two, two goes to three. So uh, this is what is the uh, the meaning of a permutation, permuting some set. Okay. So you see. Uh, so what is S K? So S K is the set of all bijections on A, okay? And uh, then you know that you can in fact uh, know the cardinality of 
dissect what is the cardinality and you know that's a k factorial so yeah that is not needed but just to say okay now once you have a set of all bijections on a um you can actually define the function very uh, nice function this is sine function from sk to uh, uh, this set one comma minus one and what is how this function is defined okay i am defining it but uh, the thing which you are using i haven't said what are these things i will explain these things in a moment but yeah you just uh, see how the definition goes so it maps the sine function maps uh, each element of sk that means the permutation group it takes the value one if this given permutation is an even permutation and it it takes the value minus 1 if sigma is uh, the given permutation is an odd permutation okay okay so you can recall this but now i will explain uh, this what is even permutation and odd permutation but before that uh, let me uh, talk about some more things related to permutation so what is a cyclic permutation okay so now you know permutation is an uh, is some bijection on uh, set right a finite set if if you are saying you have permuting k elements then this permutation will is a map bijection on a set of k elements so if uh, now you have uh, let's take this set a as 1 2 3 4 5 5 then the symbol actually when you write 1 2 3 5 this represents a cyclic permutation okay so what is the meaning of this how we can uh, understand the so the when you write it like this 1 2 3 so that means this 1 goes to 2 and 2 goes to 3 and 3 goes to 1 and whatever elements which you don't see here in this bracket uh, in this uh, they are fixed basically so 4 goes to 4 and 5 goes to 5 so this is one example of a cyclic permutation in um, on a okay uh, similarly you can uh, have many more you can write 1 to 1 2 1 3 uh, you just write some and you uh, the meaning is just this this whatever you writing so it is goes from left to right so one is going to 2 to going to 3 and then you are coming back so it's a it's an example of a cyclic permutation okay so yeah this is what i explained that the sigma of 1 is 2 and sigma of 2 is 3 and sigma of 3 is 1 yeah this and, and others are fixed okay now in general so suppose if you have um, so this is one example of a cycle uh, cyclic permutation now in general suppose if you have an arbitrary set having arbitrary number of elements but it's finite so suppose if a is uh, consist of n elements and now if you want to understand what is a k cycle what is the meaning of a k cycle in it so it's a similar thing so you write suppose if you are writing 1 2 if if you are considering this uh, cycle this 1 2 3 4 and so on up to k the same thing that 1 is going to 2 2 is going to 3 3 is going to 4 Four is going to uh, five and so on up to k, and then again k is coming back to one. And whatever numbers, since k is less than one, so there are some positive numbers which are not here. Okay, so for those numbers, uh, they are actually basically they are fixed. So, so you say that it's a cyclic permutation of order k. Okay, because there are k elements in this cycle, you can see. and for yeah sigma of this sigma if you are calling it if you are saying this to be let's say sigma then the sigma fixes uh, fixes other elements uh, sigma is j is j for j is equal to k plus 1 to n okay and these are known as uh, these are k cycles so it yeah one more thing i just want to point out it should not be in this very nice uh, order it could be like 3 5 2 it, this is also a k cycle a uh, three cycle here you can say so yeah so i wrote 1 2 3 4 up to k so it should not it can it is not necessary that it, 
will look like this. You couldn't have any uh, ordering, and but we just want to see some sight. So th this is how a K cycle, a general. Uh, uh, this is an example of a K cycle in S N. Okay. So yeah. Now the why we define this cycle cyclic uh, permutation because this is uh, this is something which will be we will be using to define the those alternating tensor and symmetric tensor. But yeah, now we, once we understand what is the case cycle, what is the meaning of a case cycle in S N? Um, let's see. Uh, uh, so now when you are considering two cycles. So there is a special name for it. Uh, a, a two cycle is also known as a transposition. You can you will see in books they also write. So two cycles, and why we are specifying on two cycles? Because there is a very nice fact about uh, two cycles in in SN uh, uh, in the group of permutation. Because there is some result which I will explain through example that which say that if you have a uh, every in fact every permutation can be decomposed as a product of uh, two cycles so not proof i will just uh, explain this through some one example but yeah these two cycles are important because yeah like i said that every uh, permutation can be decomposed into product but i i am using the word product but i haven't said what is the meaning of a product of a cycle that also i will explain so okay since uh, Okay, uh, so yeah, so first let me explain what is the uh, product meaning. So see, sigma, if you, you take two element in SK, let's say it's a permutation group in uh, so the permutations, uh, these are elements which belongs to a, a SK. And then that, you know that these are maps from, if this is K element, so these are maps from the set to itself. Okay, the bijections. These are bijections. So, and tau is also bijection from the same set to the set. So you can, so you know that the, these are maps. So you can talk about composition. So basically, when you are seeing the product of two permutation, it corresponds to taking compositions. So the composition is the product here. Okay. So, okay. I think first let me. Show you some example. Uh, maybe yeah. Okay. Sorry. Okay. Just the first. Let me explain to you this. So this is one example. Um, so I'm. So we are taking sigma in S five. Okay, uh, sigma in S five, and uh, so what is this element? So uh, you can write in this matrix notation also that this means the meaning is this one goes to two, two goes to three. That means sigma sends one to two, two to three, three to four, and four to five, and five to one. So it's just as you see, and, and the other way of writing the compact way, we can write it like one, two, three, four, five. Okay, one goes to two, two goes to three, three goes to four, four goes to five, and five goes to one. So now you see this, it's a cycle, right? And what is the cycle? It's a five cycle. But uh, what we are going to see that this five cycle can be decomposed into the, uh, as a product of two cycles. Okay, so let's see, and that is not some in arbitrary fa fashion. What you can do actually, uh, the claim is that whenever you have uh, some cyclic permutation, what actually you can do? Uh, so, like for example, if you have this cyclic permutation, so and for this only, I'm going to see show you how you can uh, do the um, how you can write it as a product of two cycles. It's a five cycle, you see. So you can actually, the claim is that this is the product of one, two, oh, sorry, not one, two, one, five, one, four, 
one three and one two. That means you can just club. You start with one and take the last element and you adjoin with one and then you take this two cycle and then you keep one and then the next element in the list one four and then this one three one two okay see although I, since i have written one two three four five eight, so it looks like okay for this number but any in in general you can you know that in place of this you can just write a1 e2 e3 e4 yeah. so just that order in that order which I, is miss is interesting like the first place you just start with the first is uh, uh, first element in the cycle and you club it with the adjoin the starting from the last one five one four the claim is this and this is always happened this is always true one can see a formal proof of this also but we will just uh, convince ourselves that this in fact this indeed holds so let's see why this is true like like i said so what is this so in between what is this this is a cycle this is cycle so these are the elements of uh, s5 right so these are <clears throat> basically uh, the all these are functions all two cycles are functions so basically this is composition composition of these four, four maps or permutation so let's see why this is um, equal to um, the this cyclic or uh, this five cycle permutation so uh, so you, yeah of course so composition is this a composition so you have to uh, start with uh, so you just uh, first you expand this what is the meaning of one five this two cycle this two cycle means is uh, one goes to five five goes to one and remaining elements are fixed so you just expand it uh, if you write it this way it will be become more clear why it is happening so so you can quickly write the product uh, so one go one four that means one goes to four four goes to one but others are fixed and this one three so one goes to three three goes to one the remaining is fixed similarly one goes to two two goes to one and the others are fixed now let's see so you have to just uh, track the elements where they are going so so here for instance you start with one we want to see finally after performing this product where one goes so one goes to two here right but then you have to so uh, you will apply this so this sends two to two okay and again see this also sends two to two and this is two so two basically fixed so here one goes to two only now next element is two so two goes to one now you, you have to apply the sigma on this one so one goes to three here from this element uh, and here now this will act so three goes to two. So three under this three is fixed on okay and again it, it, uh, from this also three is fixed so three goes to two so finally two goes to three you have started with two so two is going to three so two goes to three similarly three goes to three and then this three uh, this well while this acting we have to see where three goes via this map so three goes to one okay but uh, now you see where one goes via this one goes to four and now this will act on this so four fixes four so four is going to four one so three is going to four one okay and similarly now you start four goes to here from four four is going to four now this will act on this so four this sends four to four only so four is fixed for up to this again but here it changes so this sends four to one but now let's see where this so this will send one so you have to see where this sends one so one goes to five so four goes to five now five goes to five five fixed so these three permutations fixes five. You have to just see the last thing. So this five cents five, five to one. So you see this is what you do. And this is your exactly the cyclic one. In fact, in generally this works. Okay. Okay. In fact, you can see why why this works on this way writing. Think uh, try to think why this particular decomposition works. So this is uh, so we we have seen that this this five cycle uh, one two three four five this is written as product of two cycles right in this fashion okay 
Okay, I will again come to this example, but um, let me go to the next example. Now take uh, one more example. Um, so now you take sigma to be some element of same S5. Earlier we have taken a cyclic permutation, a five cycle, and we have shown that that five cycle can be decomposed as a product of two cycles. In fact, four two cycles we have seen. Now uh, let's take some different sigma, which is not a cyclic permutation, as you can see that this, so this is the permutation. So sigma, what this sigma does? So it sends one to two, two to four, four three to five and four to one and five to three. So you write, try to write in this way. If you, in fact, you can check that this is uh, equal to this because one goes to two, two goes to four and then where four, four goes to one. So this, this, sorry, this and this consist of one cycle, one, two, four. Okay, now you, what you do actually, you start with the element which is not in the list, this cycle, one, two, four. So you start with three. So three goes to five and five goes to three. So this is another cycle. So, okay, maybe, yeah. So what is the trick here? How you are writing this as a product of these, one is three cycle, one is two, two cycles. So the process is this. So you pick any element here uh, uh, out of one, two, three. You start with any element, not ne necessarily one. You can start with two also, for instance, this is one way if you see when I started with one, you get this, but now you let's say you start with two and apply uh, um, one by one sigma until you reaches to the, uh, you, you get back to the same element. So for instance, if I start with two here and now I will act sigma repeatedly on this uh, two and I will do this until I reach, I will get back to two again. Okay, so for instance, via this permutation sigma, if I apply sigma on two, so sigma sends two to four, but sigma, when I will again apply sigma, so sigma will send four to one, okay? And again, you do apply, you apply sigma because you have, you want to reach to two again, right? So when you apply again sigma, so it will send one to two. So you see, this is the, Two, go, two is going to four, four is going to one, one is going to two. So basically you have this cycle. So this is same. But the thing is that these two cycles are same, right? These are cyclic permutations. You, you can think it like you can arrange them in a circle like this. So it, it tells you that it's, uh, see, there's no difference. One goes to two, two goes to four, and four goes to one. So either you are saying two goes to four goes to one and goes to two, or you are saying it's all the uh, same. Okay. So this is same as this. Okay. So this is now what is next? So now you have to just see whichever elements is not appeared in this cycle. Okay. In this three cycle, you start with uh, that element and then again do the same thing. You apply sigma and, and then you see that. So yeah. So sigma, when you apply sigma, so three is not here. In this cycle, so you start with three, then sigma will send three to five, and then again, sigma, when you apply sigma, it will send five to three. So you have this three by. And in fact, you can see that this is. Uh, so you, what you see actually that any permutation is either a cyclic permutation, okay, an element of S pi, or it can be decomposed as a product of two disjoint cycles. Why I'm using the word disjoint? Disjoint meaning the elements are, there is no common elements in between. Okay, like from, for, for, for instance, in this example, when you sigma is this, you see it, it is written as a product of these two cycles. This is just a composition, but you see this, this cycle consists of one, two, four, and in this cycle, you have three, five. So they're mutually disjoint. So the no elements are common. So this is a general fact about permutations okay so we can so these are all general results so which you can if you you can see the details in some book algebra book but yeah we just i will just mention these things because this is maybe it's, okay yeah so this is a, a general fact which we can deduce after seeing this example that every uh, sigma in sn 
uh, in a permutation group can be written as a product of disjoint cycles. So you see, this is this was one example where we have seen that this is uh, this is written as a product of disjoint cycles. Okay, but uh, before this, there was this example of uh, this cyclic permutation, and we showed that this this can be decomposed as a product of two cycles, every cycle, and the, yeah. So the the general fact is this. From here, from this example, we can write this fact that every sigma, every permutation can be written as a product of disjoint cycles. We are not talking about it should be a cyclic permutation, product of cyclic. But the next fact, what it says, every k cycle means every cyclic permutation can be decomposed as a product of k minus one two cycles. For instance. You see this sigma. Uh, this is a five cycle, right? And we have shown that this is written as a product of four k, four two cycles. So if it is k, then it has to be k minus one. So it's a general fact that every k cycle uh, can be decomposed as a product of k minus one two cycles. Okay. So now you see if you combine these two statements. <clears throat> Okay, by combining these two statements, you can you immediately see that if you have you start with a general permutation element, you can always decompose that element in as a product of two cycles, right? Because first stage you may have you, the first thing is clear that you can always starting with a permutation, you can always write it as a product of it's a product of disjoint cycles. Okay, now if suppose if the it is a product of disjoint cycles and it may happen that the number of disjoint cycles may not be same like in the previous example one cycle was having three elements and another was two but the next fact uh, says that okay <clears throat> every k cycle can be decomposed as a product of two cycles so now you just see that three two so you because there is already a two cycle so you don't do anything to that just take the three cycle from so from that earlier example you can decompose that three cycle into a product of um, two cycles, two two cycles. Okay. In fact, yeah, I hope this is clear. So, yeah, every cycle, k cycle can be decomposed a product of k minus. So, in general, yeah, what we can uh, come conclude that to freeze uh, for, for every permutation, there is a uh, uh, it can be written as a product of two cycles. That means every uh, permutation can be written as a product of trans transpositions, basically. Okay, and this is how. Okay, one thing to observe, uh, you you may have noted that uh, if you have an odd cycle, odd cycle. What is the meaning of odd cycle? The number you just count the number of elements there. So, for instance. One, two, three, four, five. That was a five cycle. So that is an odd cycle. So if you have an odd cycle, uh, then odd cycle uh, will have. Uh, if you decompose into two cycles, then it will decompose into even number of two cycles. Like uh, in the earlier example, you had a five cycle and you have decomposed into four two cycles. Okay. And uh, vice versa. If uh, uh, if and not vice versa. If k is odd. Now, if uh, sorry, if k is even, then uh, you will see that uh, the it can be written as a product of um, odd number of uh, two cycles. Okay. Okay. I think yeah, this much I wanted to say. Maybe the next thing. Let me see what. So, yeah, so all in, so what is the conclusion? The conclusion is this, that every sigma, so every sigma, uh, let's say if you have some, just simple A1, A2, some AK, then uh, from that earlier fact, it can be always, uh, it can be decomposed as a product of two cycles, A1, 
a k minus 1 and so on up to a1 a2 this is this can always be done so you see uh, so you, what you can count actually here you can count the number of two cycles in this product okay and we just now we made this observation if this k cycle is odd if it is k is that means the k is odd number then it's a even number of two cycles it's an even number this is an so that's what uh, so now uh, now you understand for every sigma you have this product of two cycles so now once you understand this fact that yeah for every sigma uh, belongs to sk we can uh, write this as a product of two cycles then that definition which i have written earlier makes sense or you can understand better what is how it is defined so now let's go back to the definition yeah so so now this function the sine function it sends sigma to one if sigma is even permutation so now you understand what is sigma if that means if sigma is written as a product of even number of transposition let me say transposition that means two cycle then you assign a value one to that such a permutation and if sigma is odd, oh, sorry, if sigma is written as odd number of transposition, then you assign the minus one value because it's an odd permutation. You say it's an odd permutation. Okay. So it's just like putting some weight. Okay. You may have seen different instances like you're assigning some weight to a particular type of uh, member of uh, that group, SK permutation group and that helps like for instance uh, in defining uh, some okay yeah now uh, let's uh, i will come to the definition that which yeah so i think when we will see the definition it will make much more sense See the examples uh, now. When I will give you uh, showing you the general definition, so the examples which we have seen, we will compare this definition with those examples also because that was those were very uh, the examples were in very uh, for k very small k. In fact, we took two right every time we are like taking r two um, two copies of vector space and you thinking of examples dot product and there we don't find many trouble because you can directly do the checking. Because what was happening here, you know, okay, just let, just let me first uh, say this, state this definition and then I will tell you what was there happening. So now, you know, what is the K tensor? So now we want to again uh, classify these K tensors into two uh, uh, classes. So we say uh, a K tensor on V. And now you know the, the classifying this is also very natural because we have seen some examples which we are behaving differently. One is determinant function on R2, and then there was a dot product on R2. Okay, so a k tensor on V is said to be symmetric if this k linear function, which you have. So again, you recall this is a k, it's a the v, when I write V V is to k, that means it's a k copies of the vector space with L itself okay this is vk all vi's are equal to v okay and um, if you want you can say that uh, the v, uh, v1 represents a variable here v2 represents and yeah this is up to your understanding but yes. and this satisfies so you say it's a symmetric what should happen that f of v of sigma 1 comma uh, v of sigma k is equal to f of v1 so on up to vk if this equality holds for all sigma belongs to sk so what is the meaning of this it just says that you see sigma applied to each one two three up to k that means you are actually doing some permutation so given sigma you are permuting the variables but you see clearly see if you increase if your number of variables are more the class of permutation or the number of permutations or permutation group is gets bigger and bigger. In fact, it's a very quickly it will be 
like expanding. It, it's uh, because it's a factorial. The, you know the cardinality. It goes like if S K, the cardinality of S K is K factorial. So if the number of variables are high, then uh, you see this uh, sigma belongs to S K. Uh, class of sigma it's a very large so that means the checking becomes more and more uh, cumbersome like you have to check for every it's, a, it's such a condition right but most of the practical situation uh, which we encounter uh, we don't encounter a large sk okay that, so yeah so this is saying that if you permute the variables that means if you for so you have to what actually it's saying that uh, see, uh, let me just write this. So these are the elements, right? So what is the meaning of, let me just decode this for just one example. So let's take some sigma. So let's take the simplest one. Let's say uh, one, two, just take this. Sigma is equal to one, two. Now you understand what is the meaning of one, two. The meaning is F of, so sigma is the, when one, two, that means Sigma sends one to two and two to one and remaining are fixed. So that means if I check this value, f of v1, but v from through here, f of v of sigma one, but what is sigma one? Sigma one is two. So this is v2 and v2 is v1. So v1 and remaining are fixed. Others are fixed, not changing. But again, this defines the permutation of this elements, right? But you are just permuting two elements, others are fixed. But again, this classify as a, this, is, this is a member of SK. So when you do that, suppose if you do this one permutation, the value should not change. Similarly, you can demand, okay, what about if I interchange V1 and V2? Then also you should have the same value. So you see, I'm just saying one by one. So now you have to take into account all of sigma belongs to SK, not just these two things. But this is what it means, checking. Uh, so you are just shuffling the variable, uh, uh, like changing the places of the variables. And uh, you, you demand that your function should not change. It should not change its value. If you are just doing the uh, permutation of variables. Okay. So such a, uh, such a function, uh, su such a tensor is uh, known as uh, asymmetric tensor, okay that you demand this to happen. Now, what is an alternating tensor? So next is alternating tensor. Sometimes you will see like skew symmetric people also say it, but, but the general thing is like skew symmetric and alternating. Then there is again a classification. If you, if you are not, if your vector spaces are not over R, if over different field, like I was saying yesterday. So, but we are not going to talk about those things. So that's why I'm just saying alternating, but you should understand it. it you may see that people may say skew symmetric also, that's fine. But in general, skew symmetric and alternating, they are not seen. So yeah, it's better to say alternating. So a k tensor is alternating if f of, um, yes, the same thing uh, for all sigma belongs to sk, you permit the variables. Uh, it should be, it should satisfy sine of sigma times f of v1 vk. Now you understand what is the meaning of this. So yeah, you know that when you take sigma in SK, it, it can be either a even permutation or odd permutation. Oh, I should have made this remark. Um, in fact, there are various ways of ways of seeing this thing that uh, when you claim that you every sigma can be decomposed as a product of transposition, then in fact that defines you can define some sort of equivalence relation, and that equivalence relation partitions your um, um, SK into two equivalence classes. Basically, you say two, uh, two even per if, um, okay, uh, I think, yeah, there is a class of even permutations and there is a class of odd permutations, like yeah, this way. So you have two class. So if, if, you're, if you're belonging to the even permutation, if your permutation belongs to the even permutation class, the sine function of sigma will take one value. And if it is an odd permutation, then it, it will take a negative value. Okay. So if your tensor is such, such that it satisfies this thing, it, it satisfies f of v sigma 1 sigma k equal to f, 
uh, f of v1 vk on the class of even permutation and if it is negative of this thing because sigma sine of sigma will be minus 1 if your if your permutation is an odd permutation if this is what happening you say it's an alternating right if it is odd then it is positive sign sorry if it is even it's a positive sign here and if it is an uh, odd then it's a negative sign but for symmetric it doesn't happen symmetric <coughs> it takes same values irrespective of if it is an even permutation or odd permutation okay and I think now you see the definition, so you see why the word alternating is also there. Because sometimes it's take positive, sometimes it's negative. Alternately, it can take different values. Like sometimes they will be equal, and they, sometimes it will be negative of one another. So this is uh, the uh, example of a. Uh, this is the general definition of a alternating tensor, K tensor, and symmetric K tensor. Yeah, this is another way of writing same thing. Sigma, if sigma k cycle and k is on. And let's see some uh, uh, two examples. Yeah, this example. Yeah, this is one important example because this is will be related to something which we will be studying in the, uh, in the coming lectures. Uh, something known as wedge product. Okay. So now, uh, what is this example? So V is some vector space, finite dimension vector space, of course. F, and you take two linear functions on this vector space, and you define F wedge, uh, I, what should I call it? Yeah, we are calling going to call it wedge. So let me call it wedge only. F wedge G is a map from, you can define this map, F wedge G from V cross V to R with the help of these two functions in this fashion. Um, you define this to be f of u times z of v minus f of v times z of u. Yeah. Okay, that means you see how it is defined. So first you just uh, it's a product. Okay, it is a product multiplication in R. Okay, and you are just uh, the later you are just switching the variables. You are taking you are acting f on v and u. Then this uh, function the claim is that this is a bilinear function and checking bilinearity is not difficult you can also check because again you have to what you have to check you fix one variable and see if with respect to other it's linear or not and do the same thing for the other variable you fix v and check if f with g suffix u is linear or not and that you see the expression itself looks linear because what happens if you fixed u let me just say if you fix let's say if you just fix u then f of u is a number, right? And f of v, uh, either here z of u is a number. So, uh, and this is just a linear combination of some linear functions. So it it, should, it has to be linear. Similarly, if you fix v, then this is a number and this is a number and it's a linear combination of linear functions. So it's again a linear map. So it's a clearly it's a bilinear map. Why it's alternating? See, okay, yeah. I yeah, now I will make this. So I was about to make this remark because you know when the copies, when the when we have two tensors, when we're just talking about two tensors, then uh, checking alternating whether a tensor, two tensor is alternating or um, symmetric is or not, it is very easy because you know in that situation you have just S two. You have to just think of S two, and in S two you have just two elements. One is identity permutation and another is uh, sorry, what I'm saying. Yeah, another is one. Uh, one is sorry, what I hey, just a minute. Hey. Yeah, I either you. No, I'm saying something wrong. I just S2. Yeah, sorry, sorry. I'm I'm sorry. Okay, sorry. I, yeah. S2. Yeah. So what happens? Suppose if you are just thinking about two tensor, you have to just deal with S2. 
so it it consists of just two elements right one is identity elements that means every element is fixed nothing is changing right one goes to one two goes to two but there is one more other is in which one goes to two and two goes to one so these are the only two elements so you have to just bother about this because this won't do anything because you are taking the same thing only this thing you have to check means you are just switching so one goes to two you send the first variable to the second variable and second variable to the first variable and 